So, custom GPTs are the hottest thing on the internet right now. And I have just found out that when you click on explore and it opens up the store, that my custom GPT is right here under writing. It's currently 12th. Uh, so thank you to everyone that's used it. That's amazing. It's so cool to see. But I want to talk a little bit about custom GPTs and how to make them for yourselves. So I just got done doing a live training. Uh, we've been doing some live trainings just to kind of test the waters and see if we can actually add value to people. And it's going pretty well. So I think we're going to open it up to more people. Um, I don't know if there'll be a link in this description because I don't know if we're quite ready yet. But yeah, it's not that expensive, guys, honestly. And we're just doing like one hour a week where you can ask questions and we can kind of interact. Uh, we're still going to be live streaming as well. It's just um, right now we haven't been live streaming because I've been working from home because I've not been very well. I had the virus and then I just haven't been feeling very well in general, uh, just tired and things and also colds. So yeah, we've just been doing live trainings and we will be doing live streaming as well. But So in the live training, I decided that I could teach people how to make their own custom GPTs because a lot of people are going to make a lot of money from this and... I want you to be able to make money as well. So we're going to talk about what are custom GPTs, why are they useful, how can we use them, individual parts of a custom GPT, how to prompt engineer and simple versus complicated custom GPTs. So what are custom GPTs and why are they so useful? Custom GPTs are enormously valuable because they allow you to give much more context to chat GPT. But not only that, you can actually change the like brain of chat GPT. So before you were just giving instructions to a chat GPT model. But now you're creating your own assistant with your own context. And that's why it's much more powerful. So you're actually sending an API call. You're creating an assistant um, when you actually create an assistant. So if you go on chat GPT and if you press explore on the side, I want you guys to follow along. Click on explore. God, I hate this layout. <clears throat> And then click on create your own GPT. Now, when you press save here, it actually sends an API call to ChatGPT OpenAI uh, AI, API, and it creates an assistant. And that assistant is almost like its own custom ChatGPT model. Now, it's not quite the same as a fine-tuned model, and you can do a lot more things with a fine-tuned model. It's just way more complicated. But it's almost like having your own fine-tuned model. And then when you send a message, it creates a thread and it sends the first message to that thread. That's how it actually works. Now, how can we actually use custom GPTs? So if you can think of a task that you... So if you can think of a task that you do quite a lot of times, but you can't get ChatGPT to do it perfectly every time, and a really good example of this is creating SEO rich content. You can send the same prompt five times to ChatGPT and four out of five times it'll be good or three out of five times and two out of five times it'll be bad. Tasks like that are perfect for custom GPTs, okay? But you have to know how to actually create them. Now, I really like to talk about a specific process that I have for creating custom GPTs which is actually this process here. So the first thing you do is you have to break down into the simplest steps possible, the steps that you want it to take. So an example of that would be my content writer here. Now this is a really complicated prompt, but if you just break this down, these are the steps that I want it to take. So let me just show you what that looks like. You can actually delete most of this content and you can just leave the steps that I wanted to take. Everything else is secondary just to help me get the output that I'm actually looking for. But all of this is actually unnecessary. Well, it's not unnecessary. It's, only, it's, it's just additional. The most important part is that you break down into very simple steps what you are trying to achieve and how you want ChatGPT to actually do it. So you need to be able to break the process down into simple steps. Otherwise, ChatGPT is not going to be under able to understand what you want it to do. Now, 
all the in additional information here is how you want it to do. So this is what you want it to do. And then all of the information after that is how you want it to do it. So for example, what is the keyword? Once it's given, research the keyword and understand the context. Use Bing to research five websites that are already ranking for the keyword on Bing and try to identify how you could write similar articles using that keyword as a base. Once done, say, okay, the research is ready. Now I can produce the table. And then once the user says, okay, produce the table. Another example, now ask for the website in HTML. That's what I want it to do. And then I tell it what I want, what I, how I want it to use that information. So use code interpreter to read the code and take out relevant internal links for the article. You should look for products, brands, categories, important and relevant pages for content. The links have to be relevant to the keyword. So after using code interpreter to list 50 links, use ChatGPT to choose 10 relevant ones. Now this comes to another point that I should mention. So when I say that you need to use ChatGPT to then find relevant internal links, it's because there's two types of research or whatever that ChatGPT can do. Either it can do logic based using code interpreter or, or, and it can use opinion based. So if you want it to choose internal links that are relevant to the article, it's hard to use logic because it will use something like Python. It will use random number generator. It will do something crazy. Instead, what you want it to do is use the logic to extract the information. So use code interpreter to extract the information and then use ChatGPT to choose 10 relevant internal links. So you need to kind of explain to ChatGPT that you want it to use Code Interpreter to output the internal links. Then you, you want ChatGPT to actually choose the relevant internal links. If you don't do that, it will give you some random internal links that just don't make any sense. Now, the next stage, once you've broken everything into four easy steps, is to reinforce that with additional formatting requests or how to do things. And I highly recommend using words like strictly um, or concentrate on or focus on. And this is where you kind of just give it some instructions. So obviously, this is a chat GPT content writer. So I've just written things like strictly only use an internal link once, strictly space out internal links throughout the article, strictly use logical and keyword rich anchor text for all internal links, et cetera, et cetera. So these are how I want it to actually do the final product. Okay. This isn't, this, this is kind of necessary just to reinforce the point. Okay. I've tried before to put all of this in one big prompt. It doesn't work. It's much better to break things down into steps. So step one, do this and do it like this. Step two, do this and do it like this, but then have an overall kind of list of ways that you want it to do specific things. Okay. So this is based on the content writing because it's a content writer. So I'm very, very specific on how I want it to write the content to give me the perfect output. So again, that's what these are here. Point one, always have a key takeaway table, for example. And you do have to repeat yourself many times in these custom GPTs because it will still ignore you. And then right at the top, I like to do something that I like to call the mission statement. This is where you effectively summarize what the custom GPT's job is. I put this right at the top. These are on pretty much all of my custom GPTs. So your objective is to write one comprehensive article that will be posted to my website. Taking this into account, you should never repeat yourself over generations. You should never use an internal link more than once. So scratch it out once it's been used. Try to use relevant internal links to the article. You never conclude until the final generation of an article. You never inv invent internal links. You never forget to use tables to make good, well-formatted SEO optimized content. And then finally, you use example1.txt as an example on how to structure and how to write. So this is something else that we need to talk about, which is knowledge versus code interpreter. So I actually find that knowledge doesn't work that well. And a lot of people, 
focus on knowledge because what they do is they upload like the um, user search guidelines Google. Uh, they they find the PDF or whatever and they upload it to ChatGPT and then they say use this as context to write an article. The problem with this is that I found that it doesn't work that way. You can't feed it a massive amount of information and then expect it to use that information in the blog post. So instead, what I've found it very, very useful to do is to feed ChatGPT very specific information, not even information, very specific links or product images or pages or whatever it might be as .text files. So this will be read and ChatGPT can easily draw internal links from this and use them for your articles. This is a really, really good way to use it. Another way which I personally use it for is I give it an example of an article that I like. So what I did was I took my best performing article, I saved it as a .text, and then ChatGPT uses that as context for how to formulate an article that will rank well on Google. So that's another thing you can do. But feeding it big PDFs just doesn't work. Like I've, I've tried and it's failed many, many times. So the next one is web browsing. And web browsing is super useful for one specific thing, which is most people's businesses aren't famous enough to be recognized by ChatGPT. So if you go on ChatGPT and you say, don't use Bing, tell me from your training, what is two men.it? It says, as of my last update, April 2023, which is five months after we started the business, um, it's not recognized by ChatGPT. But if you say, now use Bing and tell me what it is, what you can do is you can easily give context of newer, uh, newer websites, newer domains, et cetera, et cetera. You can feed them to ChatGPT. And it's much better to allow ChatGPT to understand something itself than it is to just say, two men is an Italian fashion retailer. Uh, selling classic sartorial menswear. It's much better that ChatGPT finds the website, reads it for itself, and understands exactly what it is. So that's what web browsing is really, really good for. I, I use it a lot for that reason. Dali image generation speaks for itself. You either need image generation or you don't. I'm just going to quickly say actions I don't use either. Um, so yeah, don't worry too much about actions as well. I would say they're not really necessary with web browsing or code interpreter available unless you're doing something very, very specific that requires like an API call or something, then you could use actions. But then code interpreter is probably one of the most useful uh, capabilities that ChatGPT custom GPTs have. This is what allows it to read um, HTML, what allows it to extract information from various sources, um, that knowledge doesn't have access to or uploading files doesn't have access to. Okay, so that's how you can make a custom GPT to do something specific that you want. But I do want to quickly mention something which is really, really interesting. Um, you can rank on Google with these and it's a really good opportunity to get your website on Google and to get a backlink from Google, uh, from ChatGPT. And you can very easily just make some chat GPTs, custom GPTs, give them like a name, like for example, topical authority generator, and guess who is at the top of Google around the world for topical authority generator right now? It is my custom GPT. So this is a huge opportunity. Think about your niche. Think about what you could make that's useful for people in your niche and use this video to prompt engineer something that is useful for your niche. And you may be able to use this to bring traffic to your website. And you may be able to use this to introduce your website to more and more people, especially with the growth of the GPT store. This is an incredibly interesting opportunity. It's also just monetizable in itself. Probably in the next six months, it will be available around the world that you get paid per usage of your GPT. I don't know if that's how it's going to work. I just think that's going to that's going to be what it how it works just because that's how YouTube Premium works for example. So I have a feeling that's what they're going to do. So it's really really exciting. Could be another income stream for people and the fact that you can just rank on Google for pretty good terms like topical authority generator is very very interesting to me. That's going to be it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was useful. This was a 
15 minute video, but we did just do a two hour live training. If people are interested in the live training, leave a comment. I don't really like pushing things on the channel, um, but I feel like the people that are in the paid group right now are really benefiting from it and they're saying that it's really, really useful. Um, so yeah, we're still going to be streaming. Um, they'll be a bit more sporadic, but the live training will be every week. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching till the very end, you're a legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.